Hello, everyone, and welcome to another Dustin.TV interview. I am, as always, Dustin of Dustin.TV, and I am super duper excited to be interviewing um, one of the coolest ladies on the planet right now, Melanie Perkins, who is the founder, the CEO of Canva, uh, an awesome website that is looking to level the playing field of, of design and making the internet a more beautiful place. Melanie, thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you so much for having me. Absolutely. So today, I just really want to know your story. I want to know what it is that that uh, you know that that generated this idea that you know I need to create something to to give equal access to beautiful design tools and and put it in the hands of people who have you know either little to no design experience whatsoever and make it easy for them. So uh, tell me about you, Melanie. Uh, where did you start? Where did you come from before Canva? Yeah, sure. I was actually studying at university. I was teaching students design programs like your Photoshop and InDesign. And it would take a whole semester for students just to learn the very basics of how to use the programs. And they were so complex and difficult to use. In fact, it would take the whole semester just to learn how to locate all the buttons in Photoshop and InDesign. Yeah, I and know then, exactly how it is. <laughs> definitely. And then I realized in the future, design would be entirely different. It would all be online and collaborative and really simple. And so I guess that was where the idea for Canva was born. That was seven years ago now. And so took that concept and applied it to my first company, which was Fusion Books, which I co-founded with Cliff Obrett. And we um, built that to become the largest yearbook company in Australia and it launched in France, New Zealand. And students were just constantly asking to use it for other things, to design marketing materials, to design canteen menus, a whole bunch of things. And we realized that that initial dream was still as strong as ever and started Fusion Book, uh, started Canva. And so we raised funds from some great investors over in the States um, and built a team and we've been now in development for two years, launched for nine months and yesterday we just hit a really big milestone so we had 400,000 users sign up. Whoa! Um, with too many months. <laughs> so you managed to get 400,000 users in nine months. Yeah. That, yeah, it's been pretty crazy. <laughs> that's incredible. Um, wow, that's that's really awesome. Congratulations on that. That's not an Thank easy. You. Um, so so you just kind of this this idea came out of you know the uh, not necessarily the, the frustration but the, the challenge of teaching people how to design. Yeah. Um, so yeah. Uh, you know when when you you know as as many creative people, many entrepreneurs, you know, in your idea you have this this ideal of what something looks like uh, when you first start, but as it as you start to build it, it, it changes sometimes, doesn't it? So the at this point in Canva's lifespan, um, is it uh, has anything changed from your initial thoughts or, or initial vision? Have you made had to make any pivots or, or added anything that you didn't think of that, you know, in the making of it you were like, oh, we we need to do this. Mm. It's certainly become a lot more refined. I mean, we have the most amazing team here building you know, beautiful interfaces and making sure all the technical complexity is taken care of. The actual general premise of Canva has been quite, quite strong since day dot, actually. Um, I think it was in 2011 that I realized the power of introducing stock photography and graphic elements into the design process. Okay. And we interview people books. And so that has been really transformational because you realize that every single design is made up of elements. And so if you give people those elements, they might not be able to, like a, a non-designer won't be able to design a beautiful logo or different elements. But if we can provide those for people, they can certainly lay them out into a way that they like. Right. So and that's, that's kind of what's different about your software is it's... It gives people templates, uh, sort of guidelines to say, okay, this sort of a structure works. Insert your element here or insert your text here. It's all kind of laid out for you, so it takes a lot of the, uh, you know, a lot of the guesswork or a lot of the, the fiddling that might take someone hours on end to, to fiddle it out. Um, yeah. But, but you've, you've, you've kind of done all that work up front for them. Yeah, that was absolutely our intention. We wanted to make it easy to design something very quickly, but at the same time we wanted to give people who do have more design savvy or who are designers the ability to have a lot more freedom as well. So we kind of we consider ourselves a layout creation tool. So not doing the fine-tuned pixel manipulation as you do in Illustrator or Photoshop, 
we're doing beautiful layout design where you can collaborate with other people and it's much, much simpler to grab all the different um, graphic elements that you need. Awesome. Yeah, I really love that about Canva because, okay, so I'm a designer. Um, I, I don't necessarily need the templates, but when I'm in the middle of, you know, creating three or four blog posts, I don't want to necessarily have to do all that work. I can, I'm more than capable of doing it, but sometimes the, the templates really makes my job more efficient. Or exactly. if, you say if I'm, I'm walking a client through it, it makes my life so much more uh, just efficient and effective. Um, and if not, you know, it gives me validation with, oh, I, I designed something like that. Hey, it is beautiful. <laughs> so it's valid. Yeah, definitely. Um, so we, we have another guest with us on the... Uh, on the Hangout, I want to introduce my my good pal, um, everybody's favorite uh, Google Plus uh, analytics expert. Uh, ben Fisher is on the line with us. Uh, he's managing our uh, comments and moderating for us. Um, thank you so much, Ben, for doing that. You're the man. Hey, everybody. How's it going? Happy to be here. And definitely awesome, ben. awesome to meet you, Melanie, and thanks for having me, Dustin. Absolutely. So, Ben, you've got some uh, some comments for us, some questions from the audience? Yeah, we actually, uh, we've got uh, one statement, actually, from Aaron Wood that would definitely like to be answered. And uh, Christopher Volkman actually has what looks like two really good questions for us. Um, but let's go ahead and get started with Aaron first. Sure. And I think you were in on this conversation a little bit earlier today. I so, yeah, actually, yeah. I did see that earlier. So Erin asks, um, ask her how she feels about potentially taking work away from designers and putting it into the hands of the bloggers. Um, so that's the first part of the question. I'll, I'll have you answer that. I think it's a fair enough question, Melanie. Um, you know, as a designer, you know, I, I think to myself, well, are there going to be less people hiring, now, hiring me now since they have free access to these, uh, these powerful tools? Um, what are your thoughts on that? I think that we're really just at a new chapter with design. So I think design is as relevant now as they ever have been, if not more so. So social media has introduced a whole new requirement for small businesses and bloggers to be posting on a daily basis. And this is something that they can't normally afford to get a designer to do every single day. It costs infinite amounts of money to compete with big businesses. Whereas I know. Designers People pay me. So. Exactly. exactly. So designers can create beautiful templates on Canva and offer whole new services for clients that are branded. They can create beautiful logos. There's so much more of a focus on creating beautiful design now that it just puts designers actually in a position of power because they've got so much more demand and so much more awareness of the beautiful things that they can create. In Canva, you can't do logo design. It's not something that we ever intend to do. Um, and right. Enabling designers to create beautiful logos, beautiful elements, beautiful templates just gives them more, more of a market. And I think innovative designers already are jumping on this um, new method. Also, things like business cards. So usually when a designer creates a business card, they'll send the client a PDF. And then there's this um, process where every time a new, uh, new staff member starts, they have to get the name changed. And then if you're sending, you know, creating, a, in our case, yearbooks before, we'd get 10 pages of changes back saying change page 54 right. to, from yeah. there to there, all of these really annoying text changes, whereas all of a sudden, rather than delivering it to the client in a PDF format, they can deliver it in a Canva link, which means that it's a lot more versatile. Rather than designers having to constantly make these text changes, which is just an absolute pain, it gives right. them a new tool to communicate. Yeah, uh, I think that's a perfect answer too. And I think uh, to add to that, I'll just add my thoughts. I think, you know, the idea of putting these tools in the hands of, uh, you know, of people who don't have access to these sort of design tools. You know, people like myself and and Aaron. You know, we're professional designers. Uh, even you, I'm sure you have the entire Adobe suite at your disposal. But mm -hmm. you know, having being able to put free tools, uh, simpler tools, in the hands of your potential customers, I think, um, not only helps them to understand your job a little bit better, um, I think it might actually show them how valuable we really are. You know, for those who really don't quite, you know, they think we just fiddle around on a computer and, you know, it's, you know, it takes us five minutes to just do something. I don't know if you've ever had one of those clients, uh, but, you know, they want 15 changes. Like, yeah, you can do that in like a minute, right? Mm. Um, and text changes aren't given any weight. 
it's like the, the part that you have to change it. It takes time, but it's not something beneficial. I mean, obviously, it's, it's useful, but it's not something that's considered valuable. Right. So I think, you know, I think it'll absolutely, you know, increase our value as designers. And, you know, those people who are using the, the free tools to create blog graphics, quote graphics, simple things like that, those aren't, you know, necessarily the things that they would hire me for or hire you for. They wouldn't pay, you know, pay me 50 to $75 an hour just for a simple quote graphic. <laughs> I don't yeah. think be making too much money off of it. So great question, Aaron. Thank you for that. Uh, ben, we have anything else waiting down there in the... Uh, Oh, you know what? I wanted to address uh, Aaron's second point because I think that's a really cool, interesting fact. Um, do you got that up there, Ben? That's the international sign for one second, please. <laughs> okay, so Aaron also continues saying, uh, I know that artists can submit to the Canvas site and receive some kind of compensation, but it, but is it as such as much as if a person had and then he continues on. But, I, you know, I didn't even know that. I wasn't even aware that artists could submit things to Canva. Um, and, and do you pay them, like, a royalty or a percentage? How does that work? Yeah, that's a very important aspect of Canva is that photographers and illustrators are submitting their graphic elements that are available in Canva. That, I guess, is the basic premise behind Canva is that all of these different tools, so your photography and illustrations and fonts, are usually only accessible to people who have Adobe tools, whereas obviously with Canva our intention is to get beautiful graphics and photography into the hands of everyone to be able to be used, you know, if it's a presentation or a blog graphic or whatever it is that you want to design. Yeah, so, so you know, me as, a, as an artist, I can submit, uh, say, a, a template or uh, a font or a photograph. How does the, uh, how does the compensation for that work? Yeah, so every time your image is sold, you receive a 35% royalty. And the um, what we've actually done is introduce a new license type. So rather than purchasing an image and then using it for all of your work for the rest of eternity, we've mm -hmm. wanted people to use lots of different images. So we introduce this one-time use license, which means you pay for that one image in one design. So it's a much more restricted license type. But what it means is that it only costs a dollar, and you can use lots and lots of different images rather than the same image over and over again. Got it. Well, that's brilliant. I I can definitely appreciate that. Now, I'm not a photographer, so um, you know, I'm not used to that sort of licensing or anything. But you know, for me, that sounds like a awesome deal. Thirty five percent royalty, and you guys put in all the work to to market it and to uh, you know to host it and to get it out there. Um, I love it. Ah, thank you. Sure. So Ben, uh, I know we got some more questions in there. What do you got for us next? Okay. So we've uh, actually got quite a few people here who are asking some questions, and Christopher Volgman is just going off the hook. He has a <laughs> lot of questions for Love you. Love you, Christopher. Right. Thank you for the Thanks question. Thanks a lot, Chris. So I mean, I'm gonna have a hard. It's gonna be hard to like pick out which one to go with first, but I'm gonna just go for the gut on this one. Go for and it. And the question here is: Is what would you do if Google made you an offer? Ooh. They're listening, you know. <laughs> I have to say, there's, there's a lot of people very interested in what we're doing at Canva. I think when you're doing something very innovative that hasn't been done before and is obviously solving a big need, um, a lot of we're, we're drawing a lot of people's attention. But we're very committed to what we're doing here at Canva. Um, we've, we're really just getting started with our journey. I think we've done one percent of what we believe Canva can be, so we're, we've got a long way to go yet. Awesome. Good answer. Good answer. Next question, Ben. All right. Well, there was a follow-up question that kind of really, Christopher. I mean, that was pretty much uh, answered for you right there, and that was, you know, what is the end game for Canva? And I think you pretty much just told us right there. Right. So, you know, but I think another interesting question is, is that when it comes down to how did you get funding in the first place, and that was, is what were some of the challenges that you faced in getting funding from investors? It takes a very long time to get funding from great investors. In fact, um, like at the start, so my first company, we, it was organically funded and we knew nothing about the investments. I didn't even know what a VC was. I then had a five minute conversation with an investor after a conference. And I, so I'm from Perth, which happens to be the most isolated city in the world in Australia. And um, then I went to San Francisco for what was going to be two weeks, stayed for three months, learned everything I possibly could about 
the investment scene. Um, and then it wasn't until three years later that we actually closed investment. We ended up with some incredible investors, some top VC firms from the States and some from Australia as well. Um, but it just, it really took a very long time. It takes a long time to convince people of your vision that you can actually execute. Right. I think one of the fundamental things for us was just keeping in contact with the investors as we demonstrated that we could actually do things and execute upon what we said we were going to do. Um, it does take a very long time to, to get it right, though. I believe it. I've never had to do that personally, and I can only imagine how crazy... Uh, how crazy that must be! So, congratulations on that, because um, that's a heck of it. And you were working, I how you said two or three years to get investments. Yeah, so I met an investor in two thousand and well, I think it was like ten or eleven, and then it wasn't until two thousand and twelve that we. My years are getting all confused. <laughs> it was two thousand and twelve that we closed it. No. 2009 to 2012, or anyway, it was a it was a few years in there. It's been such a whirlwind, but it, <laughs> I think I need yeah. a timeline on my on my wall. Well, I think that's a testimony in and of itself. You know, you, you worked for years without getting in, in any investments, and it was your vision that that carried you through to uh, to make to waiting it out and not stopping until it happened. Yeah, that that's absolutely paramount. It's just being committed to your vision. You have to believe it before anyone else will even consider it, and you have to believe it for a very long time. In our case, yeah, I believe it. So uh, Ben, I think we got a few minutes uh, to get a couple more really good questions. Then, then Melanie, I want to come back to you and just see what your best design tips are for the non-designer. I think that yeah, is sure. for our audience. Uh, so Ben, any last uh, really awesome questions? Yeah, so actually, uh, Christopher, I'm sorry, I'm going to have to pass you on this one. I know you've got two questions in the queue, but uh, we're going to have to go with Matthew Shuey first. So how's it going, Matthew? Good to see you out there, buddy. Um, so Matthew's basically asking, you know, does Canva really need, need creative images and artworks from third parties uh, to resell? Um, Absolutely. So having great images from um, stock, the stock photographers and um, illustrators is absolutely paramount as part of the experience of Canva. Some people, of course, go in and use their own images, but for our beautiful layouts and for the beautiful um, designs that we create, we are constantly using the stock photography and illustrations in our designs, and it does just really enhance what you can do. Of course, you can put your own images in as well, but it really is fundamental. Okay, awesome. and then the last question that we have from Christopher, and you know, it's to me, it's a it's a pretty important question actually when it comes to any kind of you know software as a service, basically, and that is, if too many people use Canva, won't the images on the web begin to have more and more similarities? What happens to create independent creativity? That great. is a great question. I as well. I thought it myself. Sorry. I I said that uh, I actually thought of that question myself. I'm glad he asked it. Um, yeah. And I, ha so I, guess, I have my answer for it, but I'd love to hear what you... <laughs> I, I'd love to hear your answer. Um, I think, so that relates very much back to that creative community. So it's really important that we're getting fresh photography, fresh illustrations, fresh layouts into Canva constantly. Because as soon as you have, you know, as I was saying, infinite photography and illustrations and, you know, beautiful photography and illustrations from all corners of the world, all styles... It doesn't have any fingerprint. It doesn't have a Canva look. We want the Canva look to look high quality, absolutely, but we don't want it to look similarity. Yeah, and, you know, I think the same thing. I think as a as a designer, I've seen this this kind of thing in different uh, in different verticals. So you take WordPress, for example. You know, there's a ton of WordPress themes out there. Some WordPress themes get insanely popular. Um, you know, say take a Genesis theme. If you're a WordPress junkie like I am, Genesis, Genesis Theme is one of the most uh, popular WordPress frameworks out there, and it's a template, and it has the you know, ability to you know just launch it and you're good to go. And you could easily say you know look if everybody buys Genesis, is, aren't all Genesis blogs going to look exactly the same? Well, no, it's not true. Uh, you know, each one has a unique thumbprint. There's there's ways to advance it and to to customize it and you know, people come out with different innovations, which spurs on more innovation, which sp spurs 
more and more you know creative juices. And I think the more um, the more people use it, uh, at least in my in my view of the future, I think the more people that do that, the more uh, Canva, as long as you guys are keeping on your toes, uh, is going to innovate. And and the more artists it's going to draw and create more templates and more um, you know more more uh, more creativity breeds more creativity. Um, that's just how I feel. Yeah, no, I completely agree. Cool. So Melanie, we're we're coming up on almost uh, 25 minutes now. Uh, I want to make sure we're not keeping you too long. I think we've got pl plenty of awesome things to attend to. And what time is it where you are? You're on the other side of the earth. It's 9:36. At night. My clock's fast. <laughs> but yeah, in the p.m. right? In the a.m. Oh, in the a.m. Oh, okay. So you're just starting. Yeah, the time. We'll keep you another two hours. Exactly. <laughs> Well, yeah, I, I do want to wrap this up because, um, you know, I think one of the most uh, inter things that I'm most interested in are your your advice. What would your advice, your your best tips be for the non-designer? Um, say, you know, let's put a, a specific demographic to it, for the blogger out there or for the social media junkie who is creating images either for blog posts or for social media updates. What are your what are your best pieces of advice? What would you tell them to do? The most important thing is just to get started. So there's this huge fear built up that people think that they're not going to have the design skills, that they don't have the time to learn. And so our whole objective for quite some time is to figure out how to make the learning process as simple as possible. So when you get into Canva, you get this 23 second animation that takes you through how to search, how to drag, and how to publish a design, 23 seconds. And then you go through these starter challenges. And so I really recommend doing those. They just take you through really simple things, how to change the color of something. There's a really fun task, how to add a hat onto a monkey. But what this does, they're very simple, but they build up your confidence and they build up your skills. And so after the first five minutes of using Canva, you should feel a lot more confident with what you're actually capable of achieving. So the most important thing really is just to get started. And then we've got a blog with of design tips. There's some really basic things that if you know about can make your designs really pop. So just like having contrast and so having your background if it's dark and making sure your text is white, if your Absolutely. background is lighter, having your text darker. There's some really basic tricks that if you employ, you'll feel like a very good designer in no time. I totally agree. I'm actually taking a group of students through a, a class that I'm calling Class Zero, teaching them yeah. some very basic design principles. Um, and it really is, it's about some, some simple fundamentals, learning those fundamentals and uh, putting them into practice. And like you said, just, just do it. Um, it. It takes just doing, just uh, being brave enough to put it out there and you know, see, see how it plays, see what people say. And if it's, uh, you know, just resolve that it's not going to be any good. You know, just, <laughs> you, you have to, I, I'm working on this thesis right now of, you know, you, you kind of have to be really bad in order to get really good. You have to be okay with that. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, as, as a designer, I'm sure you started out, you look back at the stuff you made early in your, your uh, college career when you were just, you know, in school to be a designer, and you look at your stuff then, you thought, oh, my gosh, this is the best thing ever. And then you look at it now, you're like, that is garbage. What was I thinking? <laughs> I think that applies to absolutely everything in life. But if people just post their first design, so they make it a birthday card for someone or they update their Twitter banner, I think just getting it out and getting some positive feedback will give people confidence to continue in their journey. I agree. I totally agree. Any, any final thoughts for design tips for newbies or non-designers? Really just get started, create your first design, publish it out into the world, share it with someone, and take every week you'll get a new design tutorial so you'll learn new things about you know, colour palettes and um, how to do the basics of photography um, filters. Every week we take you through a new chapter. So literally if you log on to Canva, you sign up, you take the first starter challenges, you've started on the journey and you will be a better designer. As you, as you go. So don't worry about feeling overwhelmed or anything like that. The whole point of Canva is to be friendly and easy to use. Amen. And the last question I'll ask Melanie is, how often do you guys update those templates? I know some people were asking that. Uh, are there 
new templates every day, every week, every month? Uh, what's the release cycle if there is one? Um, as much as possible, but there is some very exciting things coming in the template in the layout department. So oh, such a do you get in touch with us. Um, there, there's a lot more to come. Awesome. Well, I'm excited for it. Thank you so much for joining me today. Uh, thank you, Ben, for being awesome, moderating those comments and pulling out some of those questions for us. Uh, if you guys want to learn anything else about Canva, just visit the website. Uh, Canva.com. It's a beautifully designed website, and that's coming from a web designer who's kind of a snob. Um, <laughs> so visit Canva, sign up, go do something, just get started, try something, put it out there, hashtag it with uh, Canva001. Uh, I'll, I'll put that out there. That's the official. This is my first Canva, so hashtag Canva001. And I will be actively pursuing that hashtag and congratulating you on your first Canva design. And I'm going to be sharing out some of my favorites. So uh, again, Melanie, you rock. Thank you for being who you are and doing what you do. Uh, ben, also, thank you. And uh, everyone, go, uh, go be awesome. Make something beautiful and share it with the world. This is Dustin from Dustin.tv signing off.